Okay, the uh, the cylinders are looking pretty good. Um, <clears throat> you can see my cross hatch there. It's it's it's. I think it's I think it's close. I think it's good. I think uh, I think I'm okay running it. And uh, you know if it <laughs> if a month later I have no compression and the motor eats itself, then I have myself to blame. But I really, you know, I'm not out that much money at this point. You know. Um, okay, so. Right now, I'm checking out the rings. I, I had concern because it's an 80,000 mile motor um, about the uh, you being able to use a standard uh, bore ring. Um, uh, I, I am not overboard. There was still factory cross. My, here's my thought process: is there was still factory cross hatch in the cylinders. Um, I could see it pretty clearly. Um, so there's just there just can't be that much wear there. So I didn't I didn't feel it necessary to to hone or bore the cylinders and get bigger pistons and rings and all that. I'm, I'm going to try to make this work. Uh, the, I measured the piston and I measured the cylinder and the clearances are pretty much still in spec. Um, I mean you can just kind of tell when you're sticking it in there. there. There's not even enough. There's not even rock in the piston. I mean it it it, it it's in there pretty pretty snugly. So to measure end gap. Um, it's pretty simple. You you have specs. I'm using a factory spec. Um, I'm not sure if that's the spec I'm going to go by, but if it's looser than factory spec, obviously that's not good. Uh, if anything, I would probably go a little tighter. I'm not sure. I got to do some research. But the rings. Uh, I'm working with the top ring, the top compression ring right now. Uh, I, I put it into the cylinder, and I, I've read a couple uh, websites from engine builders, and you know, like websites like CarCraft. And a lot of people recommend to take your end gap measurement at the top of the ring travel because that's where the highest compression takes place, and that's when you need the best seal and the best you know gap setup. So that's what I'm doing. Whether it's right or wrong, so be it. So my measurements from factory. Uh, I don't think this camera is going to be able to zoom in on these. No. Okay. Well. You could just take my word for it. It's 0.012 to 0.02. So what I did was I took my feelers and I grabbed the uh, the 0.02 feeler. That's the biggest one on this on the spec. Um, and then I found the gap, which is almost at 12 o'clock. And it, you know, it fits a little loose for my liking. Um, you can see that there's no drag. Is there clearance? No, not really. Um, but I, I'm I'm kind of leaning on the uh, leaning on the edge of probably snagging some file to fit rings. It's a it's an added cost by quite a bit actually. This ring set was um, it's not quite twenty five thousands. It's Somewhere between twenty thousandths and twenty five thousandths. I'm, I'm guessing probably around twenty two. Uh, if I can get this thing open enough to find the twenty two, um, I'm going to check it at twenty two. You know, just to see, just so I can you know for sure. Yeah, you know, see, I would call that good um, or a good a good measurement there. Uh, it, it slides in easily, but you can feel it dragging on the sides. Um, you can almost let it go, and it almost stays there. So I'm at 22 thousandths on my compression ring in this cylinder. I haven't checked any other cylinders because uh, I'm just feeling the water here. If I, you know, if I read online, you know, obviously that's at the top. That's at the top of, of the range or above. So I, I'm just out of spec. I'm just out of spec with these standard rings. Uh, so I think I'm gonna, I think I might return these. These were, like I said, a sealed power set of rings, uh, E921Ks, and I got them. Um, you know, Summit's price on those was 97 bucks, so it wasn't that big a deal. If you go to File to Fits, uh, it instantly bumps the price up to like 130 bucks. Uh, and then I also have to buy a ring filer. Uh, or 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 borrow one or something. I, I'll, I'll need a ring filer. I'm not going to try to do it with a hand file and a vise. It's just what's an extra you know 50 bucks at this point. So um, that's going to add quite a bit of work. But since I'm kind of skipping a little bit on my 
cylinder cleanup. I did it myself. I saved some time and money there by doing that. And I'm using parts from my other motor, and I'm, you know, I, I'm, I got bearings with my, uh, you know, there's my crank over there, my reman crank, and that came with bearings, uh, main and rod bearings. I think spending a little bit extra and getting some file fits and getting some, you know, taking the time to file fit them, it's just, you know, it's just going to make it work that much better with how I've kind of DIY'd the rest of it. So I think that's where I'm at. Maybe I'll do, you know, heck, maybe I'll do a video while I'm doing that. I, I'm not sure. But um, so the rest of my tasks today are going to be finished cleaning up these. These are actually, this one's pretty clean. Um, I got a ridge, uh, a, a, a groove cleaner. I can't figure out how to make that thing work. It just seems like it's going to dig right into the the material. Not not all about that. So I think I might stick with the brush, toothbrush, and brake cleaner and just scrub them out the best I can. Um, I've got them all lined up here, ready to go, ready to get cleaned up. So I think that's where we're at here with this thing. I got a, I, I have cam bearings also from Sealed Power, which measure quite a bit bigger than what the stock cam bearings do, uh, which is alarming because I've had lots of problems. I've ordered a lot of my parts through AutoZone, my hard parts, like my rings, and um, their computer system just seems to be crap. It doesn't give you the right part numbers for a lot of stuff. The the crank, when I was going through a crank process, um, you know, if you order one for an LS1, they try to sell you one for a Gen 1 small block Chevy, or, or maybe it was a Gen 2 small block Chevy, which obviously is not good. Perfect, which is what grenaded my last, you know, the last crank that was in that motor there was just destroyed. So the snout looks good, the uh, the bolt threads in nice, so I'm pretty happy with this one. Um, so that's it, I'm going to wipe my cylinders down with some ATF, and then I'm going to put some oil in them, and then I'm just going to call this puppy done for the day and go do something else. I think that's uh, that's about where I'm at with this thing. So uh, alright, well, hope you, uh, hope you enjoy the videos that I made so far, I know they're stupid and corny and... Uh, again, this is just the way I'm doing it. Uh, nothing I've said should be taken as, you know, oh, this is the complete 100% right way to do it. Um, I'll let everyone know in a couple months how it works out. Hopefully I'll have some videos to prove that. But, uh, yeah, uh, just something, you know, just a regular DIY guy trying to get his hands dirty and uh, learn how to do some stuff, more stuff. Um, so... If you have any comments, you can leave them below. Uh, otherwise, uh, catch you guys later.